We're going to go crazy here. We're going to talk about applications of both scissors and stackers to some different fly tying applications. So here what we have is laid out. If, if you're going to do much fly tying, it's really nice to have your materials out in advance. These are chunks of elk hair for stimulators or elk hair caddis. These are for stoneflies. These are for bass bugs, saltwater, clousers. Um, so I'm so so and here we have some scissors from very short fine point, moderate. These are anvil adjustable uh, scissor loops. These are Dr. Slick razor scissors. These are hair scissors, specialty. These are tungsten scissors. I'm going to talk about those as we get to them. But first, let's start with stacker. What if we want to use some little, tiny, short deer hair? Maybe we're tying a really small bucktail caddis. Or how about a comparadon? Let's knock the, the loose hair out of there. Now, I, I can't do it in a big stacker. It won't work. You need the fine tube. You turn that thing flat and then you carefully pull out the base. See how those tips are all lined up? But you, you gotta be slow and careful, not too much caffeine. You get a hold of them, success. Now you got a uh, wild hair in there, you pull it out. There you go. Really nice comparadon wing using a small hair stacker. So, now let's go on to this size. When I pre-cut these, I didn't pull out the, the under fur, because if I did, they'd, it would fall into a pile. So I'm going to pull out the under fur right now. And now this batch of hair would not work well in this small stacker. It would be too tight in there and it wouldn't tamp down. So I take my, guess what, medium size stacker. Again, turn it on its side, very gently open it up. And, and also, th th this hair has a curve to it. So if, if you just rock that a little bit and even brush your finger along there, the, the hair will fall with the curve down. And that's one of those techniques I don't even think about. But it really helps. And you see how nicely those tips are lined up? You can tie your fly now. And you have all these ready. Uh, moose, or no, pardon me, elk mane or moose mane. Much longer hair. You might use this for um, big stonefly wings. It does not compress a lot. Now, this would not stack well. The thickness is fine for this stacker, but the length is too great. So it, it works much, much better to put it in a long neck stacker. And another thing, by the way, these are hair scissors. Um, to help those tips line up, you put it in your stacker and you, you trim those ends and that kind of loosens up the hair fibers and it helps them tamp down. Turn it on its side. There you go. All nice and even. You got one wild one out there, two wild ones. Pull them out and you're ready to go with a nice long wing. But again, it would not have worked out well because the long fibers, they just tend to get, they, they fall out, they won't, they won't line up. Bucktail, not everybody likes, to, let, me, let me show you how to even, so first before I do that, why use these hair scissors? These are my favorite razor scissors. Um, these have actually had a lot of wear and tear to where the tips aren't cutting as well as I'd like to. Bucktail, elk mane is tough stuff. You do a lot of cutting. I tie lots of clousers. You wind up dulling your scissors uh, sooner than you should. That's why you want to have these, these hair scissors. And they have a just about the right cutting length. Would you want to use a cutting surface like that? 
for, for big hair? No, not even. And it turns out it's not even handy for the really short stuff. Because these scissors are best for finish work on flies, uh, small trout flies. So you got your good hair scissors, you cut your, cut your bucktail off, uh, pull your under fur out. Now this would stack very nicely in a large hair stacker as I showed you, but I'm going to show you the hand method. This won't line up the tips as well, but it, some people like this effect better. You pull out the longest ones, discard them. Pull out the shortest hairs, discard them. And then you slide your thumb and forefinger up there. Get, say, the top third, and then line up the bottom two-thirds. And there you go. That makes a very nice clouser. It's different if you, you know, also, so I'll show you what would it look like if we stacked them. Again, we want our largest diameter, uh, tall stacker. Trim those ends. That helps, that just helps loosen up those fibers, lets them shake down. And these are long enough, I can just grab them by the back. See how those are, they're lined up very evenly. Uh, I like that effect on my clousers. Not everybody does, so they, they do it by hand. So, one last thing, we have tungsten. We have our hair scissors here. Why on earth would you want tungsten? Well, if you like to use copper wire, I like to prepare my copper wire in advance for my tying. And I don't have a spool like this that Chris has at the shop. But I'll take, you know, two or three or four or five single spools of copper wire. Just toss them in a bowl, wind it around my finger, my hands. And I don't cut at the tips, even though this is tungsten, I cut from the base. Cut through there, and then I have all these nice pre-prepared I can keep them in a Ziploc bag. Uh, they fold flat. When I want to tie my flies with my copper wire, I just pull them out, pull it out, and lay it there. Uh, again, your scissors. Uh, bulk preparation of materials. You take chenille. You do the same thing. You take uh, your tinsel. And, and this is where you don't use your finest scissors. You're just, you're using them. You wouldn't use these scissors for this. This is where you use your tungsten scissors. And there you have your materials laid out. You don't have to pick it up and put it down each time. Uh, it just saves you a lot of time in preparation. So, scissor types, length of cutting surface, applications of stackers, bulk preparation. There you go.